It's great to be here on the latest episode of the podcast with my good friend Jim Fleeting. Hi, Jim. Hi, how are you doing? Good. The best uh, dancer, the best dancer in uh, Turkey, that man. <laughs> I, I notice you don't have any books behind you. <laughs> oh, I can manage that. <laughs> That's there. That's there. And you have to arrange them so people can see the best ones. The ones yes, well, <laughs> well, these ones are kind of up to date for me, but I quite like I quite like most of them. And um, the ones I kind of like like most of, and it's good for me because I wasn't a reader either. Um, and but I, I love picking them up and just picking wee bits. Uh, my my boy gave me a, a book about two nights ago and I started to read it and it's a Phil Knight and the shoe oh, dog yeah. yeah, and he talks about his family at the beginning now I'm already eating up with this guy, I love this guy already oh. you know, because he's talking about his dad he's yeah. been a good guy and helping me on and his kids and, and I think that's fantastic that is absolutely fantastic because I like I'm a people person I think yeah and because of that, I, I get these books, so it's quite good. So don't send any of that rubbish to me behind your back of your head. You know, just put that in the bin, will you? <laughs> <laughs> it's one of the shells that just goes like that. It just goes like that. <laughs> right. But Phil Knight, so he was the night guy, wasn't he? Was he the Nike yeah, guy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he was he was the Nike guy, but he was good. But the, to, to get me, put me, who put me into football at playing? At the street we stayed in, we stayed in a street called Clark Drive. Oh. And... Uh, there was a, a football team made with Clark Drive, the amateurs and all that, but the guys, they used to play on a Sunday. Yeah. And I used to try and get a game. I, I never got a game until I was about 13 or 14 yeah. with these guys. And uh, and the big boys, the 16, 17, yeah. so they got a cigarette in their pocket and all that nonsense. They wouldn't let me play. Um, so I started my, a team of my own. Um, five aside, we played again and they kind of side it. And so we had good fun. We good fun with that. Um, my dad, sadly, was a, a man that didn't see much of me because the only thing he'd seen was his three invalid car, his wee yeah, three-wheeler yeah. invalid car, and he would go in and watch the Rangers on road time and push me down and below that. Oh, and yeah. the, the game started, and I'm sitting there watching the Rangers and the old pitch, if you can remember that. Uh, so I, I just I just liked the game. There was a ball everywhere. There just uh, was a ball everywhere, you know, and, and some of the times it wasn't me, it was my next, my next door neighbour pal. He would have a ball, and, and 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 I just loved it. I just loved it, and I love mixing with people. You know, yeah. I was a kind of younger one of this. There's a couple of people in there, John and Alec Bell, and they love running. They were love. They were good runners. They're big, yeah. long, lanky guys, and they love running. And so, of course, I took up a wee bit of running, trying to beat these guys, and it was a hell of a hard time to do it. But I went on and on and on and done it, and uh, we had a good time. So I, I look at people I'm up there, definitely a people person yeah. who helps us out. Do you think, Jim, I know we speak about that a lot now in the co in coaching and football in general, do you think the demise of playing with your mates in the street, do you think that's missed within football development? Oh, Donald, without question. <coughs> Absolutely without question. I'm, I'm so pleased about going in at this moment in time mm. that you see these wee guys playing their wee games of football here, there and everywhere. Now we're lucky we're a town of Cowan and we'll get three Asheter pitches, which is absolutely incredible for a town this size to have three Asheter pitches. So they've got an opportunity to go there and play away. My grandsons, they go and play one at Amsel Road and they go because they can sneak in the fence, no like yeah. you want to do, sneak in. So they play away and they're quite the thing. And it's great just to let them go. You know, it's, it's, it's great. But I, I, I think it could be more though that the parent and the, you know, when the parent idea came in, want to stand at the side of the park and all that kind of Aye. stuff. You know, I think that's a, a big change. You know, it's, it's maybe it's because it's safety they're looking for. But, you know, the, the other wee kids got to play, of course, I know that. But I think sometimes just back off, just, you know, back yeah. off that wee bit and give your, your girl or your uh, son the opportunity, you know, to, to play away the, the game. I know we were speaking earlier before we went on to record and you were saying you know, all, all your mates or your dad were all platers. When did you decide or when did you think, all right, I could be a footballer? Toolmaker, I say to you there. A toolmaker, aye. Aye, a toolmaker there. When did I decide? I decided when I was when I was about 16, I went, no, 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 no. My first club was 
Irvin Cooperative when he was 15. Uh, Jim Black was his name, the man it took us, and I was very thankful of that because there wasn't many teams about. But then we were BBs. So my wee pals there, all my pals went there to the BBs. Yeah. So we went there and we, we played in there. And uh, no, but there was that kind of, kind of group. I started in, I was about 13, doing my BB stuff. Then I went to 14, I did my Irvin Cooperative stuff. Then I went to Urban Fix. Yeah, who, and, and they were owned by a company called Ayrshire Metal Product Limited and the mm-hmm. chairman is in there and the trainer works in there and now I started to work in there and it was uh, the guy in there heard that Jim Fleet's in there he plays for but he's no bad so I went and I, I got up in Vicks and I thought I was oh Puskas oh man. <laughs> if you look at up in Vicks I, I just know I just, <laughs> I just know at this minute in time one in many games but I always tell the guys, I'd love to finish, I'd love to finish with Evan Vicks. And it's still in my mind, I'm going to finish with Evan Vicks, I'm going to do something, whatever it may be, whether it's paint the pylons in the, the, the training ground or whatever. So I went to them and then I went back to amateurs because I wasn't, I wasn't having enough games. And we won the Scottish Cup with amateurs, so I was about 17 or 18 at that time. Yeah. Now we won the Scottish Cup. And then I get, went to Coburn and Laidside Juniors. Mm. You can see that the trend, I've came for the BBs, I've came for the, the such and such club, the cooperator, I've, I've came for Evan Vicks and went down again, yeah. and Bank got played with as well, trying to get, get me in, and then I finished up with Norton Tiba, I won the Norton Tiba the cup, and then I look again, and then I'm at Coburnley, that's yeah. when Coburnley picked me up, and they took me down to Norwich, and it's quite funny when you're at uh, clubs like that, there's Coney Davidson was a guy who took the team at, uh, at Coburnley, he loved me because I was a young boy. Yeah. I was only done 20, but, um, 19 with him. I was a young boy and uh, he looked after me. And then Norwich came up. I had a few other uh, people who asked me, but I, I didn't go with them. Um, but Norwich came and I just kind of thinking about it. Oh, I'm going to Norwich. So they, they won the league this year. They're in the top division and all that yeah. stuff. They won the league cup the year before. And I'm going... Oh, fantastic, Norwich. Oh, you can love the strips, the yellow strips, the yeah. green strips. And I loved the strips. I loved it, putting it on and that kind of stuff. I just did. And uh, I, I went there, and of course, I was at 20 years of age. Now, that, that meant there was another group of kids who were coming through, 16s, 17s, 18s, and 19s at Norwich. Well, I'm yeah. 20. Yeah. So it took me as an adult. You are an adult. So I, I played with Norwich Reserves for about three and a half years, four years. And I was probably the best reserve player they have ha- ever had in Norwich because they kept giving me trophies every month for player of the player of the team, and I kept getting these trophies in for the chairman. And I'm thinking, but can I know get a game, a real game? Is <laughs> <laughs> I know get a real, real game? But of course, I I think they were at my level. The, the yeah. reserves and that were at my level. So I don't think at the level of being a top class player in, in, in Norwich. And that's why I went because I knew if I fell down, I'd fall down again back into somewhere out in Scotland mm-hmm. if it had been another way about if you know if it was playing another way about then I wouldn't have I'd have been back to the amateurs back to my Norton Tiber amateurs so that was a, it was, it was tough finding a way to get in but but you must have been wife, very patient Jim because that's not a conviction <laughs> you know isn't it so by the time you were 20 when you went down and you had a few years in the reserves no. you sound you must have no. just loved the game did you oh I loved the game <laughs> I really loved the game. And I think the, the the manager, probably in my second, probably in my third year when I was there, he says, why, why are you not playing me? He says, look, I'll play you when I think the right time to play you. But he had his best pal, a guy called Tony Knocker, who was a sweeper. You know, he uh, had him in the team and he was always going to play, no me. But I had another guy, Terry Medwin, who t- took the team, who loved me. Mm. You know, he was an elderly guy and who loved me because I worked hard as best I yeah. possibly could. And that was it. So I get I get moved back down again. But I was I went I just went back home. We get married coming down and we go back home. He's going to Davis, I'm telling you about. He was running about Coburnley trying to find the money <laughs> that Norwich were going to give him. And I think it was something like 300 pounds they were going to give him, which was wow, 300 pounds. I says, it's going to I'm an amateur. I, I think they want to give me the money. Oh, oh well, I'll, I'll give you a bit of money. So this Sunday or Sunday or Monday. Monday, it was a Monday, we walked up and down Coburnley Street and the bank was shut. And we were, we were going to do it in Oryx that Monday. That Monday we were going to do it in Oryx. So Scotty said, you done me, I, you know, I had a, 
I got 150 quid and he got 150 okay. quid and that's how we were done it. Yeah. <laughs> it was just about, yeah. Oh, you're a lovely man, but that's a game of the people who are looking after me. It's talking about people. Oh, oh, I watched the games last night and I've been watch, watching the games and I said, let's start a voting for anybody who, who uh, when they, they get injured, who roll about, let's get their names. Ah, Donald McNaughton, he just rolls about in the grass. Who else? <laughs> Aye, well, I'm sure he just walks about in the grass. Aye, somebody else is going around. And then I quite like the wee guy for Hibs, the centre, centre half, but I don't like him laughing at it. You know, I don't like him laughing at the game. The last night, you know, get up and go. You know, you stood yeah. on you. I know he stood on you. Everyone in the whole world knows I've stood on you. Yeah. You've stood on someone. And uh, I, I hate that kind of thing. You know, that kind of laughing at you. <laughs> And then you get there, would, there wouldn't have been much rolling about in the juniors, I wouldn't have had ginger. I <laughs> <laughs> no, certainly wouldn't be. There's no chance of that. <laughs> because that's I what I was, I was going to say. Kind of team. I, I, I was going to say to you that when you were speaking about that, that junior football, especially in Ayrshire around there, that's a huge oh. part of the culture, isn't it? Yeah, very much so. Very much so. I got a game at, at Victor's Park, I got a game. There was this other guy called Ian Bailey who played with the same team as me. He played with Coburnley. It was late this day. And uh, so uh, the Evan Vicks guy says, right, OK, I'm playing you. Uh, I'm moving your position. Ian Bailey, can he come just drive in here and come in here? He says, you go for left back and you play centre back. No, I couldn't kick a, a drum, honestly. Me a left back on oh, my left foot, no chance. So I did and I did it and I was lucky enough that um, Celtic wanted me to go to Celtic then. Yeah. Morton wanted me to go to Morton. Not they kind of ones you got me to do, do that. And I, I took it. I mean, my, my wife, her, her, she was uh, 18, I was 19. And I says, you know, if I, if I get married, we need to be ready for it. Mm-hmm. So she got married when she was 19. I got married when I was 20. And, and again, it's all about people. And I'm, I'm, just, yeah. I'm just dying with people because they're, they're all great to me. They're all great yeah. to me. They're, they're good people to me. Um, you've noticed that yourself. Yourself oh. being quite a decent guy sometimes. Tell <laughs> <laughs> about your dancing and skills. Did, you, did you like it down in England, Jim? Did you like it? You know what happened to me, Donald? I became, I, I, uh, I think I became a leader with the other kids. I was telling you about the yeah. 18, 17, 16s. I, I, I thought I was a leader of that. I was captain of the reserve team most of the mm-hmm. time. But in that, then came sometimes they had to play Martin Peters. Sometimes oh, right. they play Chris. Yeah. Just to, yeah. to put them in. And I'm in the team and I'm still the captain. Yeah. And I'm playing away there. And, and the young kids, you know, play there. You know, I think a couple of times there a couple of fights in the dressing room between some of the, the, yeah. the, 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 the older ones and the younger ones. Yeah. But, uh, so, and I didn't like it. So I had to go and stand in the middle of it and say, right, hey, and it was the same with me when it happened to me, the big guy called Duncan Forbes, a Scottish guy. Mm-hmm. One of his guys who, you know, his antics were, were very funny. He just drove a bit Norwich, waving to everybody, took the horn to everybody. <laughs> you know, just was, like in the village. I think Muscle Bra he was from me, so he, he was quite good. So that that was why I think I started to look after them, I think. And, and I don't, I'm not meaning that in any big headed way. No. Kind of way. It's just, if, if something was needed to get done, we were told to do it. I says, come on, guys, let's go. Come on, let's go, let's go, let's go. Then I think uh, we just went on for there. So I, I, I'd love, uh, I'd love playing for Norwich regularly. I did. I've got one more game than, than what everybody else says I have. You know, I played in the cup, in the cup against Leighton Orient in the cup, and the bandits knocked us out. And, uh, you know, I, I played, as I would say, I went on time for Newcastle. At yeah. uh, Newcastle, we get pumped. Tommy Craig was in the park, and good as I doing. Oh, oh. I right doing. He, he did, but it was great. It was great. You know, I just find out all these things. Brilliant. And where did you go from Norwich then? What was your Norwich? Norwich. Uh, I went from Norwich. I went to Air United. My brother was starting a business up, so we went part time, and I, I jumped in at Air United, mm-hmm. and it worked very well for us. You know, we had umpteen pubs and all that, and discos and alarms and blah, 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 with, with all this stuff. My brother's quite good at these things. Oh. He, he, he takes on too much. And because of that, there's a bit of risk. And there was a bit of risk quite a lot of times in our business. So oh. that was how it went. So I, I went, went to here, 
Loved it here, three and a half years of visit here. And, and similarly to what happened to me, Donald, I once got a, a bit of a hard time for a, a guy, one of, one of the, the guy who was the captain of the team, I'll not tell you his name, yeah. guy who was the captain of the, the team, and then the, Willie McLean, he was a new manager coming in, Alan McLeod was going away, then Willie McLean came in within two weeks of me getting there, and Alan, uh, Alan McLeod was obviously at Aberdeen. And uh, David didn't like me being the captain. You know, and again, it was one of these other things. I, I was asked to be the captain. I said, I'll be honoured to be the captain at United. And sure enough, I, I got that. And uh, it, it was and very, very enjoyable at United. We sat in this kind of third and fourth place every year. We couldn't get that number two place. Yeah. For, I don't know why it wasn't happening for us. But that's why I'm so... I was at United, and again, I had a great time at United. I really I enjoyed it so, so much. And, uh, and that was us. And I remember you were talking about, you were saying about the pubs. Uh, one of the great tips you gave me was, as oh, when it, whenever I, anyone tries to shake your hand, that's the time to get them out. <laughs> I, oh, I, oh, that's the problem. You see a guy coming in, and uh, they, they walk in the door, and you can see them, and they just go, hi, Jim, how are you doing? How are you going on the, the day? And I'm saying, right, I'll see you tomorrow. Cheerio. <laughs> you can tell them I'm a mile away, uh, an absolute mile away. I thought you were going to talk about the story with the pub when I, when I went into the uh, pub in Norwich. The, the guys were on a day out, you know, the, the kind of top players, you know, Ted yeah. McDougall, he was a kind of top player. He oh, was yeah. Man United and these kind of guys. And uh, he was going to say, right, we're going to do it in the mustard pot. I said, I said Dun uh, Duncan, I, I, can't, uh, I don't drink. What? You don't drink? You're a Scotsman? That will never happen. That will never happen. So, of course, they take me in, don't they? They take me in. And, of course, they start, gives a pint, please. Um, pint of lager. Pint of lager for the boy. And, of course, I take the pint of lager. And, of course, I come in, Duncan then comes in again behind me and says, Who told you you could drink a pint of lager? I said, She told me I could get a pint of lager. You get two pints of lager. You get a Half pint and a half pint at all times. That's all you do. You just make sure that half pint's there so that the supporters see that all you've got is a half pint of lager. That's it. And if you want to be a wee bit of lemonade in it, put a bit of lemonade in it. And this was in all the dodges, all the dodges. All the dodges. All the dodges. Because there were no uh, supporters in that pub and their folk come down and say, how are you doing, how are you doing, how are you yeah. doing? You want a drink, you want a drink, you want a drink? And of course you'd say, uh, two half pints will do me fine, thank you. And, and that was them, they were kind of sneaky that way. But it worked, it worked quite the time. See, when we're speaking, Jim, and you're talking about um, kind of leading the groups, you know, and I know in, in, in just in a, a way in Norwich and then in here, do you think, did you naturally kind of then veer into coaching and managing then? Was that just a natural thing to you? Yeah. No, I know natural too, to, to go into it. I was Norwich City. Uh, sorry, Air United had a lot of time at Air United. We've been part time and then in my business, and there's no, I could take myself, take the day off, or whatever mm -hmm. the case would be. So, but uh, uh, Willie McLean was a man who asked me mm -hmm. to take the under 18s. He was in the, his job two years. He says, Where you go, I'll pay for it. Okay, I'll pay for it. And at that time, it was the £98 or something like that to go to the courses at Lads, and I went and I loved it. Yeah. I loved it. I just loved it. And again, I'm back to these kids again. You know, I've got these kids and I'm not saying... It's funny, I bumped into him uh, doing it at Salkut's Beach last week, Jerry McMillan, and he says, hi, hi, Gaffer, how you doing? I said, I'm fine, how are you doing? He says, we're having a, a reunion a week and Monday or something like that. The guys are all getting together. There's a guy coming for Gibraltar, David Wilson, and all this combined like young team. Mm -hmm. We're all getting together. And I thought... Fantastic! I just, I just love it. I just, I just love it. I really love it. And uh, no, uh, but the football side of it, you know, you, when you've got good coaches run about you, you can learn very quickly. You know, you're you're into the game, and and you just you just get it from them. You know, Jim McLean gave me an absolute blast when he came. The Jim McLean uh, was there doing the coaching, and it just happened to be a big daft captain of Air United that he wanted to do the, the coaching way and of course mm -hmm. so all it was was to open up my body when I get, was going to end up getting the ball that was all he was telling me yeah. when you open up that flaming body who is that is that a boy is that who the world is captain for Air United oh no and that's all he did and it just it helped me it just yeah. helped me you know it just helped me the man was such a lovely man during yeah. my 
coaching career at Kilmarnock. I phoned up looking for a player. And he, again, I'll no tell you the player. Um, I was looking for a player and it was about 100 grand I was, I was going to get for this player. He says, I'm telling you, Jim, at this minute in time, he's no for you. I'm telling you, really, he's, he's no for you. If you want to come here and, and you want to ask him about a player, just come. Oh, I'll tell you about your player. And it was brilliant. You know, it was yeah, brilliant. Yeah. I, I was going to home and it was Jim McLean who was one of, you know, close yeah. to the leagues and the cups and all that. And I just felt, God, people are good. You know, people, Sir Alex, another one. I've been so lucky with Sir, La- Sir Alex. I've bumped into him a couple of times. I've had him. He's been in a, on a course for a couple of times. And again, it, it was, I was asking him to do something for the SFA. And we f- I found ourselves in the same place, St. Petersburg in Russia. I was in there. Nice and, cities. Uh, Sir Alec was there as well. Yeah. And uh, they've been trying to get a hold of him, uh, the, the people at, at um, Scott, uh, the SFA. I said, I'll have a go. If he's there, I'll go and ask him. I'll go and ask him. It'd be nice for me to ask him. So I went and I said to him, hello, uh, Sir Alec. How you? It wasn't, I don't think it was Sir Alec at that time. Mm-hmm. I said, hello, Mr. Ferguson. I said, how are you doing? He says, fine, Alex and he, okay. I said, um, I want to ask you, could you help us out with this programme? He says, I ain't bother at all. He says, he says, well, what are you doing? He says, well, it's either schools or uh, clubs. We're trying to work out what he thinks the best and so on and so on. So he says, right, okay, meet me here St. Petersburg. Um, I'll be in here somewhere. The uh, UF is using me, using blah, blah, blah. So he, he says, right, I'll do that. He says, because we're there for about three days as a whole. So... I'm looking at him, of course, I'm looking in, I'm popping in, I'm wanting him to see my face so that he can say, oh, Jim, you come get that thing he's done. Oh, Jim, go ahead. Hello, Mr. Ferguson. He's been looking at the, the programme and all that. So, he says, is there any chance of me to... He says, I'll get it. I'll tell you, I'll get it. 12 o'clock, 12 o'clock, we'll get it. No, I said, no, I can't get 12 o'clock. Just leave it a minute. Just leave it a minute. We'll get it, though. We'll get it. Mm-hmm. So I'll go for a walk with Dick Advocat. Now, this is wee Jim Fleeton, who yeah. played. And, and, and I can't believe it. And I'm Advocat. And he, he said he went a walk, and uh, it was great for him to go a walk. Him and I, big packy, went uh-huh. for a walk. Anyway. Now, we're going to sit down, and Packy's phone goes off. It's Sir Alex who's looking for Jim Fleet. So, have you seen Jim? Hey, Packy, I've got time to meet him. We're, we're three mile away. Well, oh. of course, he says, Packy says, Jim, you see, go and see Sir Alex. Say, I want to see him right now. Oh, sugar. <laughs> Honestly, I'm built all and it was just, I had to go to run and cut. And I didn't see him, of course, I'm all sweating, I'm <laughs> hanging out there. And we're talking about the, we're talking about uh, the, 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 the fit when I get by. And I'm oh, 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 oh. So, so what do you think? So, so they're two good programmes, Jim. Just, you know, let me know and we can look at it and um. see what the, the feel what makes it. And it was just great. And the man, again, I could just go and see him and talk to him. It was great. It was funny. Yeah. How, how important then, because you know, yeah, no, do you have a minute, Donald? Can, can, can you keep it? Can, can you cut this a wee bit? I'm yeah. going to tell you. Now, I see Sir Alec, and Sir Alec, yeah. we're going back to the, the airport. So he takes me back in the airport in this big uh, limousine. And I'm trying to fill time and tell him, but I'm blah, blah, blah. And then, of course, I'm saying, oh, Sammy's one of my best pals. I said, I love Sammy. And do you remember the, the joke we made of Sammy? Aye. Uh, yeah. yeah. I remember. Girls. Yeah. The skills of the oh, do it. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that was it. And I was only talking to somebody the other day, and they were giggling away and giggling away. Mm-hmm. And they are thinking, I think I Sir Alex says, Oh, he, his face was busting. He was laughing and laughing and laughing. <laughs> and it, it, was, it was so, but that's the game. You're in the game. You're in the game. You're in everything. You, you know everybody. And it's oh, just, yeah. it's, it's kind. Uh, they've been all being kind to me. Very kind. How, how important. You know, it seems an obvious question. How important do you think relationships are in football now? And uh, how important do you think relationships are? And do you think it's more difficult to build relationships now in football? I think it's very difficult to build a relationship in football. I think you're coming up with too many characters in the game. And, you know, the, yeah. the people that are uh, coming over from abroad, it's, it's not something that I'm, I'm not anti abroad or anti people who, who, who come and go. I just like them to be to come in and, 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 and talk to one another and be like one another, because I see that in teams. You see a, a, you know, three or four folk in the park and you see where the ball's going to go, who's going mm. who's going to kick it to them and, and so on. So, But I, I just think, I like being Scottish. I'm sorry mm. to say that. I like being mm. Scottish. I'm a Scot, 
I'm, yeah. a, I'm a Scot and I'm a Scot and I'm a definite Scot. But, you know, I like more people to come in and, and, and get that. But don't, yeah. don't be wrong with me. I love the, the talented English players. I love the talented mm. European players. I don't love the talent. But I don't want a team of them. You know, if you're looking at them, it's 11 players. It's like Arsenal's got 11 players that get in the park. And there's no an English person anywhere to be seen. Mm. Yeah, how can 50,000, 60,000 get excited about, you know, these guys? Yeah. And, I, and I see it now. It's something, you know, I should get a slap for. But um, that, I, I, can't, I don't like that, Donald. I just don't like it. You know, I mean, there's, there's more from outside our country than what there is. We, we started the game. I played, by the way, in uh, America. And when I played in America, there must, there must, that way back, I'm talking, this is 1978, you had to have three Americans on the pitch at yeah. all time. Now, that's what it looks like in the Scottish game now. Yeah. You know, when you get three Americans, uh, three Scots on the ground playing 90 minutes of a game. That and must have been a great time to be in America. That must have been... Uh... The whole time with Pelly and Rodney Marsh and Georgie oh. Best and Jim Fleeting. Aye, uh, they were looking for me all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Played against Georgie Best at Fort Lauderdale and oh, it was a big game for them. Yeah. The full stadium, 18,000 of us down in Lauderdale was it? Out in the Tampa, I'd say probably around about 30,000 that they, yeah. they, 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 they fell, but they were, they were great. I can't tell you that funny joke I told you about it. I uh, remember the, the one who went, uh, my sister's went, they, my oh, sister, I, I, the rate, the thing with it, so we'll leave that one out. Uh, yeah, but that, that was the case. So I'm, I, I liked, I'd like to see more squads. I'm looking at the real life back at Hibs and I'm loving them. Charles Norton doing there. Yeah. And I'm loving, there's another wee full back who played with Ross County. Ah, uh, Josh Reed, aye. Yeah. Aye, and I'm liking these, and I'm saying, where are they coming from? Where are they coming from? They're mm. popping up, they're popping up, they're popping up. The popping up is great. They need that chance, and then of course, it's I think it's, 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 you know when we were speaking earlier, and we we're talking about you know that you were saying the industrial part of your family, like the tool makers, Certainly, all my mates growing up and where I grew up, everything was even though it was in the Highlands, but you know my village, Brora, was a wee industrial place. You know, it was a coal mine, and all my mates were welders with nig. But Scotland's changed a lot, hasn't it, in 30 yeah. years? That industrial yeah. bit, especially in Ayrshire, the coal mines, that's all gone. Aye, yeah. So. And it's, it's horrible. It's horrible. Yeah. You know, I, I, again, I like my... It was good when you're a, an apprentice. Yeah. Uh, it, it, was, it was some of the upbringing it was. It was when I came 20, I was allowed to go to Norwich City. Yeah. When my birthday came um, um, on 8th of April, and it was a Saturday morning... And I could go to Norwich right away. And that's as I went. And it was great. There was another old trick they used to do with all the kids at schools, the S forums and such as that. You know, these are all things that you want to um, take care of and mm. you judge them. Judge them. The, the, the S forums worked mm. well for, if you remember Jim McLean, mm. do you remember his team? Yeah. Do you remember the guys that were in his team? Yeah. Do you remember the S forums that were all stuck in there? Yeah. They're all Scottish guys who, who you can tell were, were grafters. Yeah. You could see that Lee Morris and the rest of them had come out with Hegarty and all of them. Yeah. It was great. It was great. So, no. That's so I'm how thinking. do you, you know, all the years you were doing the coaching and, and they, you know, with the SFA, you would have seen the, the game developing from the coaching side of things. How do you think the game has developed over the last, say, 10, 15 years? Because it's changed, hasn't it? Very much so. You're talking about... The game has changed. I think the clubs have changed. The clubs, yeah. I think it's the biggest uh, thing we can see. You look at what's coming, people coming in and coming out, coming in and coming out, and that, that just seems to be this revolving door. You know, mm. you don't hear of what in the United I, I've been here about six years, I've been here eight years, I've been here ten years. Mm. And you look at the rest of them, at these clubs just in this minute in time. I'm, I'm signing off for, I don't know whether the guy from Belgium was a top man and, and changed life in general. But uh, they were only staying for one or two years, and yeah. you know, disappearing away again. And that—that's just as. But so I—I don't—I don't, I don't like it. I don't mm. like it. And um, that's a bit silly thing to say, but I like just to see people who are keen with a big heart and want to win games and so on and so on, and no, no drop like a penny the minute somebody sneezes near them, 
and all that, even if they do do it, smile about it. I was thinking about it myself. You know, you get a sore one, you get six studs in your foot, but you're, you're up as quick as you possibly can. And that's it. No, so that time of Clark Drive, you, you learn a lot. So I take it you'll still go to watch the junior football then now, Jim, do you? I, I, I look, this the thing is, I'll watch any football. Yeah. So I'll watch any football. I, I, my, my Kelly connections is a great connection to me. I'm lucky. I'm the luckiest man ever. Yeah. I was manager at Kilmarnock and I played for the United. Yeah. It was difficult for me, I've got to say. But at the start, I got a few kind of expletives when I went to Kilmarnock. And it was quite difficult. And again, I've told you the story about getting a job at Kilmarnock. Yeah. You know, where are you going to take the team? And he said, well, I'm going to take them out of this uh, league, that's for sure. Yeah. And they got, we got relegated at that time when I said that. We got relegated. So it was a... Uh, it was good when that happened. You know, you go there and I, I was the luckiest man ever having these two teams that I can look at and go and see on a Saturday. They were kind enough to, to let me in on some occasions. I prepared on other occasions. So we, United, if they're playing away, then I look at the Kelly, the Kelly playing away, yeah. blah. And I do that. And that's stuff that people used to talk about doing in the issue. Yeah. That you used to have in the old days. In the old days, we used to see, this is them talking, no me talking. Yeah. I said, in the old days, we used to be rain with our season ticket holders. We had a second season ticket for there and we had a season ticket for Kilmarnock. Yeah. We went to both games, we just yeah. walked in and, and it was great. It was great. So, yeah. I'll, 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 just listening to you speak, Joe, you can see how you know you, you love football and you love people, but also what comes across there is how big you know football in that area you're from in Ayrshire, how much part of the community it is. Do you think it's still big part of the community, the football well, clubs? Well, there's a big programme going on with the, with the Scottish Football Association, mm. that, that uh, the community programme, you know, yeah. these people, and, and they're working at it, and they're working very hard at it. Now, yeah. I was a boss at that, so you're telling me yeah. it was rotten, and just don't blame me now. <laughs> so it's the community programme that is going, and I think it does well, I think it does well for the kids. Um, this was something that was uh, decided. I seen it in America in 1978. Midnight League basketball games. Ah, midnight, and I get you. I'm talking about this midnight league. This midnight league, and I'm trying to work it out. So, of course, when I come back to the uh, UK, it must have took me about oh eight to nine years to the midnight football leagues in Scotland. Yeah. And we were doing it. We were yeah. people actually playing football. Quarter to, uh, quarter to 12 kickoffs, and they finish at one o'clock. Yeah. And of course, it was young kids, it was great. I remember being up to Aloha, and I'm thinking, this, this is just fantastic. It's just yeah. this, getting them off the street, and you could see it, you could see it. And then the next week, I went to Dum Dumfries and to see it again and see it again, and it was fantastic again. And it was it was great, these things. And, and a lot of people carried them on, thankfully. Yeah. And uh, But no, it, it's, I just think the club and everything else is just not the same. Yeah. Just know the same, isn't it? Now, I, I might have not been. If you look at the kind of other teams, you know, the Brecon City, who's mm. down the, the ball this amount of time and the team's up the way. I'd always love to get involved with, with some of that and try and make it a bit better. Mm. You know, I did that in 1989. I, I did that. I took command up down quite the way that I should go. And <laughs> that's how it kind of happened. You know, I'd, I'd like to help out as everybody else would like to help out. Yeah. Oh. And that's just how it goes. Yeah. See the other clubs that I look for, you know, like Breakin. You know, yeah. it's, it's sad. It's, it's you know, there's a sadness in there for you. They're sitting in that division, but they're working harder. They're trying to do. Yeah. You know, that's when they've changed the juniors. Eh? Don't know what you said earlier. Um, you know, it's now the leagues are now. Mm. You know, they're categorised in these leagues, and then of yeah. course it's an opportunity to, to sneak up there. Yeah. If you you'd watch the football with the English uh, clubs in the FA Cup, you know, yeah. the Cheltenham, the Chorleys, yeah. and the you know, and then you look at them, there we go, we're in there, we're among them, we see the strips, there's a oh. Aston Villa, oh, great, great. All that kind of stuff is, is, oh. is great for the club and the, and the community. Without question, it's great for the club and the community. Oh. You know, games like that. Okay, like, for example, I think it was about two or three years ago um, where they played Hibs or something oh. like that in the Scottish Cup. And, of course, that was the whole thing. Wow, oh, where did it come? That would be I, huge. Down, ah, it's huge. Oh, hey, 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 make sure there's plenty of beer in. For make sure there's plenty of beer in. Yeah. You know, plenty of walking, yeah, they're parting and yeah. walking leg. And they're coming in and, and, oh, just, it was fantastic. That's when he beat Air United. I remember that. Oh, I was, yeah. 
the meet you and in the cup, but I, Julius uh, doing a bit of work for, for me at that time. So what she was doing, she was trying to get the team riled up and you'll know, go go for Oak and Leg because oh, it works for everybody. If you want us to win, Julie, keep talking about Oak and Leg, what they're yeah. like, what kind of people they are, yeah. and all that kind of things. And she kind of done that and they won that game and it was great. And I don't think anyone else has ever picked up that say, No, I'm an Oak and Leg fan today, blah, blah, blah. I'm an Oak oh. and Leg fan today for these uh, televisions. So it was great. It was great. No, it's, it's, it's just you've got to have a passion. Yeah, you know, yeah. look at my best pal, Donald Pardis now. Yeah. You know, he starts about, he's got that way he is, he just walks about, quite the thing. And he loves, he just loves that, but he just loves that. Yeah. You know, he's, he's kind of quiet and that, but it's all there, it's all in his head, he knows it all, it's all. And I just think, oh, yeah. oh he's a band, I mean, he, he's good at that, he's so good at that, he's so good at that. Did, did you come to the, the event where he get, um, his title? No, I never. I wasn't at the event. I seen it in the evening. My mate, one of my pals, works for the the coaching, uh, coaching UK coaching, and he texted right. me and he says Donald's got an award, and I went on it. And you could, I could imagine him getting <laughs> it as well. <laughs> oh no, I mean, yeah. it's, it's just great. But switch him on, just switch yeah. him on, and just switch him. On. He's, and he's, he's he's great. He's just such a lovely person. And you know, he's such a lovely person. No. There's a lot of well, them. There is. There is. Well, thanks very much for speaking to me, Jim. You can see again your love for football. And as you I think it's really important what you said. And you I think you've got it very naturally, the, the whole people thing through it, isn't it? It's about people in the end of the day. Yeah. You know, it's your teammates, the managers, the fans, everyone around it. Yeah. And it's just it's a great life, really. Oh, Donald. I've been the luckiest guy I've ever put in this earth. Yeah. I really have, even though that kind of what it's like at this minute time. Yeah. Um, but you know, it's been lucky I've got my own kids and my wains and everything else. You know, they stay around the corner for me, all that nonsense. So yeah. it's good for me and, and all that. And uh, I, I just am very lucky. And when I come to the football side, I've enjoyed. I, I didn't. I didn't really deserve. You're asking me earlier on. You yeah. know, I was an amateur. Yeah. John Bond, the manager of Norwich, says to me one day, uh, when I went in and chat the door, and I says, hey, any chance you're going to get a game? You said you'd play me. He says, play me. He says go to you. I'll play you whenever I play you. You're just an amateur fleet. Go to the door. Go to the door. <laughs> and as I shut the door, I turn around and says, they're a wee bit better than you are at this minute in time, boss. Amateurs are better than you lot. And I went away with Jason. I was raging with him. But that's just how it goes. Brilliant. Brilliant.